Hey, good afternoon. Got a couple of great verses here. And look, man, the whole point is, is you have to take a deeper study of God's word. I want everybody to get into his word. Like there's so much more meaning we're missing out because every name, every place, every mountain, every river, every city, uh, uh, even the word is, and even the word if, and even the, all, I mean, all these words, they, they, they can mean something more than we're being shown on the surface, right? And uh, only his Holy Spirit can walk and lead you through it. Don't think for one second that God did not know how his word would be translated, but the meaning, the true spiritual meaning was still there. If, if you take a deeper study, if you give yourself over to him, if you allow him to be your teacher through his Holy Spirit, um, and if you want to know the truth and the desire to know the truth more than anything else, it's the greatest treasure in this world that you could ever find. All right. Oh, I'm going to need a pair of glasses. Let me grab a pair here. Uh, I got so many out here. All right. All right. So this is two verses. I'm going to be pretty quick. And, and I challenge you to go through the verses above here, above these two and below these two. And I'll read them though. You know, the, what, one above it and couple below it, below these two verses, but this is uh, John 18 verses 36 and 37. And this is just what was revealed to me from a spiritual perspective when I was studying his word. And it's crazy how he does it. Like I said, words are part of origins of words and part of other origins. And there's parts of those words that are contained in the word that you're reading. And then there's words that he makes stand out, whether it be in the BDB, Thayer's mounts, he makes certain words stand out to me you know, and says, you need to look at deeper into this, look at the origin and the Latin and all, all these things. Look at the meaning of this, look at the meaning, what it means electrically, look at what it means uh, in uh, chemistry or biology. I mean, it's just the way he leads me through it, right? Because I would never do these things on my own. I would not. So it's it's crazy. The world ain't, the whole world's a strong delusion and, and that should be, be becoming more and more apparent it should be. There's a shaking, a shaking, and it's going to shake your minds and your belief system and your faith. It's going to shake everything. You know, our trees, our bodies are the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The fruit of it is being, is the progeny, the being birthed into it. We all partake in the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We were birthed into a physical form, separating ourselves from God. That's why we have to return to God, return home, repent, turn back around, turn back to him, ask his forgiveness so we can go back home when our physical bodies perish, when our physical forms die, okay? Oh, okay, so here we go. This is John 18, and uh, the verses that I really felt this spirit was 36 and 37, but I'm going to read 35 through 39. And uh, look at all these words. Like I said, there's so much more meaning contained there. Here we go, John 18, verses uh, 35 through 39. Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests has, have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Now, here's the verses where I felt the Spirit lead me to. This is 36 and 37. I'll read them the way we'll see them in this King James Version, the way it's reading now, I'm going to say. Okay. Um, and then go through it the way it was revealed to me, taking a much deeper study of it and of all these words. So, 36, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants, then my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Okay, do you even quite grasp it? Are you grasping that type of language? Okay, it's a little screwy and I don't know, it seems a little off. But anyways, verse 37 now. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end I was born, and for this cause I came, came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Okay, so now I'll read those two verses the way the Spirit revealed it to me. And John, the word John means... Uh, uh, God's grace or God's graciousness, or it can also mean God's gift, a gift of God's grace, okay, or God's gracious gift, okay, and uh, so, so there's that. So 
Here we go. John 18 verses 36 and 37 that I just read. This is the way his spirit made these words jump out at me and all that. So, I, And I'm no better than anybody else, right? We're all sinners. We're all in the same boat. But some are saved. Some are still lost. Some are still like in between. Got a foot on both sides of it, right? Got to let go of this world because it's not what you think it is. Okay. Jesus, the son of God, savior of all mankind, who is God incarnate, our Lord, gives us the answers to all of life's questions and why we were separated, departing, and why we have departed, separating ourselves from his heavenly kingdom, which destroyed our relationship, our union, and our fellowship with God, our Father, testifying as an eyewitness of our affliction. This is Christ who is testifying as an eyewitness of what has afflicted us, being brought down by this mistake of not heeding God's warning. To be oppressed, oppressed by this world, and aren't we being oppressed? Okay, and humbled, being chastened, defiling ourselves, and weakened in our own house, in our own house, by our own human bodies that are the abode of light and darkness that we are trapped within wanting us to give an answer, a testimony, realizing our sin. He wants us to realize our sin and this mistake that we have made because of our own pride, our own excessive pride and our own strength and abilities. To, he wants us to admit our guilt, our failure, and he wants us to repent, turn back to him. Okay, as he makes the truth clear, so Christ came here to make the truth clear to us, to reveal the truth, not conceal it, okay? So, so he's making clear to us that his kingdom, his realm, this realm, and that goes from uh, G, a Greek word, 932 to 935 to 939, okay? Which we were part of, which we were part of, okay? Uh, this foundation, so his, his kingdom, his foundation of power, which is and remains and always is the most high from which all things proceeded from, came into existence from, okay? It is not, so his kingdom is not connected to any that are unworthy, that have not been humbled and turned back to him, okay? Uh, nor ever will be unless they humble themselves and turn back to him and realize who he is, who he, that he is who he said he was and that he came to reveal the truth and ask for his forgiveness so they can go back home when they physically die here, when their bodies die. Okay. So they have given up their birthright. So these people who reject the gospel, the word of God, they have given up their birthright. Okay. So understand that, which was eternal life in heaven. They have squandered it. They've thrown it away. And this is like the story of Jacob and Esau, right? So they made it meaningless. Uh, and they did this to temporarily satisfy their own lusts and desires, just like Jacob and Esau. He was hungry and wanted to stew and he, he gave it away. He said, what good is it, is it to me if I starve? Right. And Jacob took his birthright from him. Okay. So they did this to satisfy their own lust and desires here in this world, okay? His kingdom, this rule of power uh, that has true life is not for any who reject the truth of his word. All who have been turned backwards away from him through the idea of a baffling wind, and I keep seeing this, by their own conceit, their own excessive pride and what they've chosen to believe as truth and what they've chosen to believe by their own carnality, leaning on their own carnal knowledge and their own carnal understanding from the flesh, from a fleshly perspective. Okay. They can't see the truth because they haven't turned back to the one true God. They haven't turned back to Jesus Christ. They haven't been grafted back into God's kingdom, God's uh, family. Okay. And so they're separated from him because of their own conceit, excessive pride by what they've chosen to believe is true, but it is not, okay? Slipping further. So, so for this reason, they are slipping further and further into depravity as their love for one another waxes cold, breathing unconsciously as the walking dead here in this world. So these heavenly hosts that have alienated themselves from God, 
and therefore they are hostile to the cause of Christ and all those who belong to him, okay, giving up their inheritance for the riches and pleasures of this world, which although are hollow and frail, meaning they don't last, okay, you always want more and more and more, right? Okay. They've stirred, so the, the, the riches and pleasures of this world stirred desire in their hearts and minds and seduced them away from God. And are, these things are obstacles to Christ's cause. They are like fallen stars that now adorn this world, this ungodly multitude of men that inhabit this world and refuse to receive his promised blessing so that they could recover what was previously their own. And they have been carried away and take them, taken captive by the deception of this world. If this kingdom uh, belonged to God, well, it does, everything belongs to God. But like it was given, dominion was given over this world to Satan for a while. So understand that. So, so there we go. Uh, if if this kingdom, you know, the rule of this kingdom was belonged to Jesus at this moment, even though it does, he's been given all authority over everything, but he gives us free will. He lets us freely choose, right? So all the people that are, if he was in control of all the people that are here in this world, basically is what that's kind of saying from a spiritual perspe perspective, uh, all who belong to him, okay, then whosoever that belongs to him that are his own, like under his authority, who serve him and attend to his body, his church, right? His 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 temple, uh, aiding, basically helping to do his work. So all the people of this world would be helping to do his work. They would be serving him, okay? By spreading, spreading the gospel to those who are still lost, okay? Okay, they would be able to attain this prize, this goal that they set out to do. You know, to become like the Most High God, knowing good and evil, be conformed to the character of Christ, the image of Christ, through the gift of His Holy Spirit. They should, they would be able to reach this goal, okay, that they set out to do, and and not become God, not be like Him, but be be joined to Him, okay. So they'd be able to realize the truth, and they would turn back to Him and and ask His forgiveness and be joined to Him, okay. So at this moment. At this very moment right now, see, Satan still has dominion of this world. So there's the problem. So they would be able to obtain this prize, the goal that they set out to do, and be able to let go of the forces, of these forces, these lusts and desires that influence their minds in this world of all the riches and pleasures in this world in order that they would not be condemned and punished. Okay? And also, also I think this also means they would not condemn punish, scourge, or torment, or put to death, and treacherously betray all those who belong to him and put them in prison, okay, which is coming. And it's already happening all around the world. It just ain't happening here quite yet, but you can see it happening, though. It's starting to happen, right? Okay, so uh, where are we at? Treasure all who belong to me is part of his lineage. Yeah, they would, so they wouldn't, like, like treat others Horribly torment, scourge, punish, condemn all of God's children, those who are joined to him, who belong to him and are part of his lineage through receiving the gift of his Holy Spirit. So all who praise me and confess my name and repent of their sins, making confession to God to ask for his forgiveness and then giving thanks that their debt has been paid by Christ, by Jesus himself, by the stretching out of his hands on that cross, okay? Coming down to overthrow, who came down here to overthrow their perversion of the truth, what they're believing is true, but it's actually a lie, okay? He came here to overthrow their perversion of the truth and their influence on the minds of his children. So those who are led astray, and many teachers in the church actually, aren't getting a full grasp. We're not born into life. We're born into death and condemnation. That's why we all have to be born again of the spirit, which is from above, not below. Okay, that's why only Christ himself can break the seal Satan's put over, over you through your flesh, through your carnal mind, and unroll the scrolls to you through the gift of his Holy Spirit. Now, he's the one that teaches you. 
Okay, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Okay, so, um, and in addition to this, at this present time, they cannot give themselves wholly over to me because of their own lust and desires. So my guidance and rulership that is the foundation of power of the truth does not come from this place, this world. It has not clearly been revealed to all at this time yet. Okay. And under threat of this crucifixion he was about to do by one who is firmly attached to this world, Pilate asked him if this is true. Like, are you the king of the Jews? Are you the foundation of power then? As just a man, being a man, can you truly be the foundation of all power, right? Being just a man. And Jesus answered him with a question. Would you say that I am? Would you say that I am? And then Jesus went on to further explain something. And for this purpose, since you do not say that I am, that you would not say that I am, basically, and for this purpose for which you are about to do, crucify him, you will bring about a result far more powerful than you could ever imagine for God's intent so that all his children will never perish and be set at one again with him. So all who accept Christ into their hearts will never perish and be set at one again with the Father, having their relationship with the Father reconciled, restored. Okay, this will give birth and convert and raise them from the dead spiritually, raise them up to God and becoming his sons through faith in my work and Christ's work on the cross, what he accomplished while he was here by what he has done through obedience to the Father, to God. They will be regenerated, brought back to life. Okay, and, it, and he told me to look up the word regenerate. Replaced, to replace those who were lost, replace those who were lost, being reborn spiritually. Repair, maybe it's repair. Uh, restore, basically restore, replace, restore those who were lost by a rebirth of their spirit giving a new higher, being given a new and higher spiritual nature to bond them to their heavenly father. And in the Latin, this word regenerate means becoming a new creation, changing from one thing to another. Because when we took the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, we were changed from one thing, an eternal, spiritual, immortal being in paradise, living harmoniously with our creator, in a world of perfection, and we traded that, threw away our inheritance, squattered it, took the fruit of the tree of the knowledge, good and evil, and we were birthed into a dying, rotting physical form, a mortal, a mortal man. Okay, so that's that's what's going on here. It's time to wake up. Okay, and becoming a new creation, changing from one thing to another, being uh, recreated, basically. Uh, re, which means again, and uh, Generated, which means recreated of one family, having uh, the same nature, being uh, linked together and having the same nature. And what's this world trying to do by this and all that's going on here? They try to link everybody, make everybody of the same mindset to hold on to this world with all their might and do as they're told. And they oppress and they do that through oppression, affliction, threatening violence and uh, taking away everything from them, imprisonment all that torture, all kinds of things, right? So that's what this world does. Christ just lays out the information, the truth in front of you, and it's up to you whether you receive it or not. Take it into your body, your temple, okay? So by this miracle, I myself will finish, finish through his bodily death. He will finish this work that which he came here to do through his bodily, bodily, his physical death. And for this cause and purpose came I, into this world, being birthed into the likeness of sinful flesh, that I should be a witness of what I have seen and experienced by divine, by the divine inspiration of God that is good and true, that pertains to God. Opening this door, so he's the one that opens that door, lets you into heaven or out of, based on your faith in him and who he is, okay? Opening this door, so now he opens this door to human reason if we accept him without forcing it upon them. He will not force it upon us. 
okay, to free their minds from this simulation. And that word was, I think it was even in the Strong's, which uh, freeing their minds from this simulation of falsehood and deceit, revealing, doing this by revealing the truth to them, by showing them and speaking the truth to them, not concealing it so that every soul of every nation within all of mankind here that comes to believe in him who is the truth so they can let go of this world that has separated them from him, from his heavenly kingdom. And he does this by a heavenly completion, being born again of the spirit, having God's Holy Spirit living within them, okay, from above, which is not from below, which, and he endows all those who belong to him, who have turned back to him and accepted him into their hearts with the ability to hear and comprehend and understand his voice, his word, my word, giving them the ability to understand his word. And he, they will be brought forth into the light. So now they can grow as a new fruit of his vine, his vineyard, because Christ is the main vine that connects us back to the tree of life, God's family tree, his kingdom. Okay. That is in his kingdom. So they're a new fruit of his vineyard that is in his kingdom. Being able to understand especially moral and spiritual truth. So there's verse 36 and 37. And now verse 38, Pilate said unto him, what is truth? And, what, and when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said to them, I, ha I find no fault in him at all. Okay. But you have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? So that's what Pilate said to them. But of course, they released uh, Barabbas, which means son of the father, right? Who, who is? See, that's the thing. We're all God's children. We were lost. We went, were led astray. We took the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. We're birthed into this world, a rotten, dying, decaying physical form, like a branch that broke off from... God's family tree and fell to the earth, right? And now we're rotting and withering. We lack that nourishment of his living water, that connection to God. And Christ is the one that reaches down to us, that came down here and, and revealed the truth to us, paid the penalty for our sins that we couldn't do because we're all blemished by sin. He was not, he was not sinful. He was the perfect man. He's, 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 he's he encapsulates, encapsulates, like I seen in that last verse, the entire, the entirety of the Trinity. He's God incarnate. He's full of the Holy Spirit. And he is man, fully man too. Man, God, and spirit. God's Holy Spirit connected completely all in one. Is Christ. One God. There is one. Okay? Understand that. Jesus Christ is the Alpha and Omega, the first and last and only physical representation of God himself, who was completely sinless, faultless, unblemished, and he came here to pay the penalty that we could not pay because he was sinless, but yet he sacrificed, he allowed himself to become our sacrifice, to pay the penalty, to release us. And if you turn to him and accept him into your heart, you can hear his voice. That's literal. That's true. Okay. But do we listen? Okay. So there's that. The more you ignore it, the harder your heart's going to get. The more you listen and obey what he's telling you to do and guiding you to do, which is always love, respect, helping others. You're planting good seeds. You're not beating someone over the head like I saw in that last verse with the Bible and keeping them bound to the law. We're not saved by the law and we're not saved by works, lest any man should boast. Bur bo boast. But Faith without works is dead, right? You have to have the faith to do what he's telling you to do and go where he tells you to go and bless who he tells you to bless. You have to have the faith to do that, knowing that he's in charge and he's going to take care of you. He has ultimate power and rulership of, over everything, all of God's creation. So there's that. There's that. So, all right. Love and respect everybody. Plant good seeds, okay? But the laws for our benefit, we should definitely do our best to keep it as best we can. But we're still in these rotten, dying, physical, decaying forms. And my emotions get the best of me in traffic or if someone's rude or arrogant or whatever. It, 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 you know, it makes feelings or maybe sometimes thoughts. I try to take them captive, but I never act out on it. But see, the people who aren't joined to Christ, they're not going to be able to control their anger and their rage and all these things. And we can see that happening in society, right? 
we should be able to see. You can see it. All right, so there's that. All right, God bless you. Love and respect everybody, and have a great day. Bye.